Hello everybody, greetings once again from Chennai, India. Today I am going to briefly talk about a condition called fiberglass dermatitis. Not many dermatologists are familiar with this entity, though it was described as early as 1942 by Sulzberger and Bayer. Though the use of fiberglass is expanding, not many case series have been published in the dermatological literature about this entity, possibly due to underdiagnosis. Since the condition is mostly seen in construction workers and it is self-limiting and is not of serious import, workers do not consult the factory doctors. What is fiberglass? We all know what glass is. I can still vividly remember being taken to Jamal's glass factory when I was a schoolboy, and I was fascinated to see how the workers blow the glass into various shapes. Much later in Venice, I saw skilled artisans making fantastic artifacts out of glass, which was the biggest tourist attraction in that place. Fiberglass is made up of glass, feldspar, sand, and soda ash. It replaced asbestos as a thermal and acoustic insulator. It shot into fame and prominence during World War I when there was an acute shortage of asbestos. In 1938, the Americans found a method of drawing out glass like filaments and winding it around spools just like you do silk threads. Such glass fibers are much, much stronger than any textile fiber, natural or man-made. Since they are also good thermal and electrical insulators and resist fire and chemical attacks, they are widely used in protective clothing like in the firemen, in curtains and as structural parts of supersonic aircraft. It is used to reinforce plastic, which is used in pole vault, fishing rods, car bodies, and a host of other industries. So you see, there is a large at-risk population. The highest risk persons are those who actually handle fiberglass products as in construction, electrical, plastic, and marine industries. In reinforced plastic, and not only fiberglass, but epoxy resin is used. And as all dermatologists know, epoxy resin is a very potent allergen. Basically, therefore, fiberglass dermatitis is an occupational hazard. But many office workers can also get exposed via the heat insulators of the ventilation equipment found in various offices. Children may be exposed to fiberglass at home, at school, and in the playground. The itching that occurs on the back of the thighs in school children after they sit for long hours on plastic chairs can be due to fiberglass and to a certain extent an allergy to epoxy resin. The clinical features. The usual sites of involvement are hands, face, neck, forearms, and folds of skin. The fiberglass fragments cause mechanical skin irritation and it manifests as scratch marks, small papules which may then postulate and sometimes they appear just as erythema with small vesicles. When it is distributed in the flexures like the elbows and knees, it has a remarkable resemblance to atopic dermatitis. The fragmented glass fibers cause intense pruritus with post-inflammatory pigmentation. The pruritus is directly proportionate to the diameter of the fiberglass, but inversely proportionate to the length of the fiberglass. Fiberglass dermatitis has an acute onset. Differential diagnosis. One is scabies, particularly when lesions occur in the webs of the fingers, but other ectoparasitic infestations. Dermatitis herpetiformis, when you get grouped vesicles, some cases of fiberglass dermatitis, atopic dermatitis, as I've already mentioned, and allergic contact dermatitis. Unlike 
Fibroglass dermatitis, allergic dermatitis takes 10 to 14 days for sensitization to develop, whereas fibroglass dermatitis develops within a few days time. Patch testing is positive in allergic contact dermatitis while it is negative in fibroglass dermatitis. Diagnosis. A high index of suspicion and a careful occupational history will lead to the correct diagnosis. The diagnosis can be confirmed by one, skin stripping with adhesive tape and then looking at this adhesive tape under the microscope for fragments of fiberglass. Two, skin biopsy, which will show spongiosis, lymphoid infiltrate, which is the usual finding in all sorts of eczemas. But in addition, you may be able to see fiberglass in the stratum corneum, particularly with polarizing microscope. And three, the more definitive diagnosis is in vivo reflectance confocal microscopy shows hyperreactive linear structures of varying lengths, which is diagnostic of fibroglass. Treatment usually it spontaneously resolves in three to four days, but it may recur in a few hours after re exposure to fibroglass. If the itching is severe, antihistamines and topical steroids can be used. Antibiotics for secondary infection of the vesicles. Prevention. Barrier creams which are usually prescribed to people working in uh, heavy industries are useless in fibroglass dermatitis. On the other hand, they may make it worse by trapping the fibroglass. Protective garments are useful, but a single layer is not sufficient because these fibers can penetrate through that garment. So a double layer protection is required. So in conclusion, more clinical studies need to be done in the high risk patients to find the prevalence of fibroglass dermatitis. And high index of suspicion will help to pick up cases of fibroglass dermatitis. Thank you.